Welcome back. Here's the next in a series of discussion of capacitors. Um, last video, I had discussed how we define capacitance based on the equation that relates voltage charge separated on a capacitor and the value of capacitance of the capacitor. And we defined the unit, the farad, as one coulomb per volt. So if you still need that, I invite you to review that video. Um, I want to describe here the behavior of the circuit that's demonstrated in the Vernier capacitors experiment. So the, ex the circuit that we have, we have a voltage supply, some kind of V. Um, I'm going to call this voltage supply V naught, uh, to use the British term for zero. It's typically what gets used for some initial amount or some steady amount. So if you see me write some symbol, with a little zero as a subscript, typically say V naught, though it's okay to say V zero. Let's just be aware of what quantity specifically we're talking about, what quantity is being represented in the circuit uh, in question. So the circuit has a switch where we can route, we have two different possibilities. We can connect up a single resistor right here in series with a single capacitor. And what's being measured is the voltage across the capacitor and that's going to be sent out to the data collection interface and what will be recorded is a voltage versus time graph. So we have some kind of voltage versus time. I'm going to put, I'm going to indicate on the scale here where V naught may fall. In the experiment this is going to be 6 volts but this could be if you have a battery hooked up it's a 9 volt battery it would be 9 volts it's whatever the voltage supply is. So let's say before we actually connect the circuit, say we start right here, and then we flip the switch up. And what happens is it engages the resistor and the capacitor uh, to the power supply, to the voltage source V naught, and current's gonna flow just temporarily, like I described in one of the previous videos. And so at the instant we flip the switch, the voltage across the capacitor is going to slowly rise. And that will be represented by an asymptotic curve that is converging on the value of V naught. Because before we flip the switch, the voltage difference across the capacitor will be zero. After a certain amount of time, enough current has been allowed to pass through this resistor, the top of this capacitor will be held at the same voltage as V naught. And our probe will read that the voltage across the capacitor is V naught. So again, what this graph represents is the voltage across C, across the capacitor. And this curve can actually be described by the second of the equations, that is this one right here. And we can just plug in some values. Um, I'll describe later some of the, the nuances of E and its role in these exponential growths and decays. Um, but if I were to look at this equation and insert the value P equals zero, what would I expect to find? Well, I would get V naught times one minus E to the zero power. And E to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one. So we get V naught times one minus one, which is the same as V naught times zero, which is zero. We can look at this another way too, the other side of this behavior, the boundary conditions, if you will. So after a really long time period T, after we've let that switch close and we just monitor the voltage, what will the voltage across the capacitor be according to the equation? Well, V at, I'll say T goes to infinity because it won't actually equal infinity. We're never going to wait that long. But V naught times one minus E to the minus, well, let's just put infinity in here over RC. We're not gonna, it's not actually going to be infinity. It's just going to be a really, really big number. And so what we get then, again, that's a negative sign in front of that infinity. 
So we have V naught times 1 minus E. Actually, let's use, let's get rid of that negative sign. It's really 1 over E to the really big number over RC. So what we effectively get is V naught times 1 minus 1 over a really big number. I'll just call it infinity here as my symbol, not for infinite, but just really big number. And 1 divided by that really big number is going to be a really tiny number. So as time goes to infinity, we really get v naught times 1 minus a tiny number, which might as well be 1 minus 0. And again, if we can't measure it in the engineering and physical measurement world, it may as well be 0. So we really just get v naught. And this actually mirrors the behavior of what you'll see for that particular equation. Now let's say we've set this and the switch is flipped and it's in the up position. We're going to get the reverse behavior when we flip it downwards after it's been switched for a, after it's been on for a long period of time. So I'll move myself around, give myself some room to draw this. So the opposite behavior of this, we still have v as a function of time here. I'll mark v naught. Make that look like a v naught. Here is time. And once I flip the switch, I'm going to get this decay curve that's eventually going to meet zero. So the the time axis or the horizontal axis is the asymptote in this case. And that's dictated, I'll make a note that that's that curve. That's going to be dictated by this top equation. And so we can again Let's look at the, the boundary conditions of this. How does it behave at the extremes, at zero and as time goes to infinity? So V at T equals zero is the same as V naught times E to the minus T over RC, which is the same as V naught times E to the zero. And anything to the zeroth power is one. So we really just get V naught. All right, there's the starting value. At t equals 0, we have v naught. As t goes to infinity, or a really long time after we've opened the switch, we get the same thing. v naught e to the minus, again, I'm just going to write infinity, but we're going to assume that just means a really big number, a long time period has elapsed, over rc, which is the same as v naught e, actually, sorry, 1 over e to the big number over rc, which is really the same as v naught over a really big number. So we can say v naught divided by a really big number is, by any measurement device we're going to use to measure it, is effectively 0. So the, the equations that we have here are really describing the behavior of what we're measuring for how a capacitor builds up a separation of charge and lets go of a separation of charge. And again, if this switch goes to the downward position, what happens is that both sides of the capacitor eventually see the same voltage. So the sides of the voltage probe are going to read the same thing. There will be zero voltage difference. And again, this matches with these equations. Um, but again, these equations are really, they're simple exponentials, simple in the engineering world, and they're really to describe the behavior of a capacitor with time. We'll go over the nature of this RC constant, this RC value that's in the equations, in another video.